Hi, I'm Jody Vance, and this is Bar Smart. What is Bar Smart, you ask? Well, it's an attitude, a new style of service, and if it's done right, it's a license to print money. How do I know? Well, I've spent a ton of money and time being entertained by the man who pioneered this program. Of course, I'm speaking of Scott Young. I remember the first time I saw Scott wow the crowd at the Roxy. As a matter of fact, I think I was one of that crowd, and I knew right then and there that I'd be back. Scott and his instructors travel internationally, speaking at trade shows, putting on seminars, and judging worldwide competitions. Since 1994, Scott has taken the business of great service to a new level, and the fun has only just begun. You may know him as the creator of Extreme Bartending, the video training series that shows you exactly how to put this winning formula to work for you and your staff. But Bar Smart has always been about much more than just flipping bottles. It's about taking care of the customer, having them come back soon, stay longer, and walk away talking about what a great experience they had. Now, if you ask Scott what his company is all about, he'll tell you it's about spreading ideas, getting people thinking about how they can do their job better. The Flair Bartenders Association gave Scott an award for having the most impact internationally as a trainer. Now, I can go on and on about this young man, but I'd rather let you watch this video and decide for yourself. All I know is in the last 10 years, I've watched as his bar had a lineup while other wells in the club stand empty. Proof's in the pouring, and this is Scott Young. Hi, I'm Scott Young. What you're about to see is a little bit different than any other training video you may have seen. I don't know if you've ever seen a seminar or been to a presentation, but I've often found that the instructors are very knowledgeable on the subject, but they stand up and they talk to you or at you for an hour. Maybe they read out of a book and never bother to ask you what you think. Well, I never liked that, and we don't do it that way. We want this to be intimate and interactive. There are very few right or wrong, black or white things in this industry, and we'll discuss them. But for the most part, they're shades of gray. Now, this is a big world out there. This service industry is everywhere, and I can't just tell you what's going to work in your area, but we can give you some new ideas and hopefully get you thinking about what will. Whether you're watching this video alone or with a group, it's not really designed to be watched in one sitting. It's not a movie. So stop it once in a while. Rewind it. Make sure you catch all the ideas. Our goal is to stimulate thoughts and discussions, agreements and disagreements, creativity and solutions, ideas. That's what we're all about. You've picked a great industry to be involved in. We want to excite you about it. There's all sorts of opportunities out there for the right kind of person. The kind of person who's going to care enough about what they do to think about how to do it better and then actually go out and do something about it. Hi, thanks for joining us. Today we're going to talk about becoming an exceptional bartender. What is it? Uh, why do we want to be that? You know, how to go about being that? Um, now, when you start off thinking about an exceptional bartender, somebody who's great. What do you think about? What comes to mind? Personality. Personality. Good. Why? What, what do you mean by that exactly? The people like you, they want to talk to you. You make an impression, first yeah. impression. They want to come hang out with you. Right? That's a really big reason on, on why we're hired, right? Because people want to go and hang out with the staff. Very, very important. Right? So you've got to be approachable. You know, be friendly. Be nice. I mean, personality is such a huge thing, and it's a really big topic. Right? We're going we're gonna to key on that a lot. What are some other things you think about when you think about a great bartender? Chris? Um, recognition. Not, name is exceptional. Right. But, uh, recognition. To be able to look at the customer and say, hey, how are you? You know, and not, yeah. and actually know that they know you've, you've seen them. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. You know, make them feel special, that you remember them. Right? I mean, in a busy place, wow. I mean, you're, you're going through, you know, hundreds of people a night that you meet. Right? And you're not going to get to remember everybody's name. It's just not going to happen. You know, is it important? Does it make a difference? Absolutely. Um, but what I like to do is I like to think of you know, face, drink, name. That, that's my realistic you know, way, way of doing things. Um, I'll try to get the name as much as possible. But you know, if I get the face, right, that's something. I was like, oh, hey, welcome back. I haven't seen you for you know, a couple months. Right? That's important. Drink, huge. You know, if you know, still drinking Ryan Coke? Budweiser on ice for you? Wow. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Right? And then name. Name is a big thing. You know, people love hearing their own name. You know? And when you get, to, you know, get that, that, the handshake. Hi, I'm Scott. Welcome to Roxy. Chris, good to meet you. Good All right. You. What can we get for you tonight? Press the flesh. You know, meet the people. You know, have that personal interaction. Super important. Right? What are some other things you think about? Customer knowledge. I'm sorry, customer. Product knowledge. 
What do you if mean? The, if, the, if a customer comes to you and they're and they're not too sure what they want to drink, you know, point them in a direction. What do you like? As you were saying about making a martini, what do you like in flavors? What do you like apples? Do you like berries? Do you like strawberries? You know, if you're if you're a beer drinker, do you like lagers? Do you like something thicker? Do you like a cream ale? You know, fruit. Yeah, fruity or hard. That's right. Be able to give them a little bit of knowledge, and then so you can direct what they, you know, the way they go. Absolutely. Without Absolutely. making them feel stupid. Right. Right. Sure. I see exactly a lot. Of, right. I see a lot of, of. I've seen a lot of bartenders do that. You know, uh, what do you think I should have? <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah. You know, like uh. making people feel uncomfortable right away. Yeah. I'll have a martini. <laughs> what kind of martini do you want? Yeah. Like making them feel uncomfortable beer. instead of like, hey. Same thing. You know, yeah. Beer. Would you like me to choose? Yeah. Right? Now, what is this bartender doing in that situation? I think they're just abusing their power. Yeah, yeah. Just being a bartender. Yeah, just being a bartender. Right? They're being a server and they're, you know, somebody has sort of shown that a little bit of weakness and they've pounced on it and they're exploiting it. Right? And it happens in life and it sucks. And when it happens in this situation, you're being unprofessional and bad things are going to happen. And it's just not necessary. Right? People are not always going to be as, uh, you know, as a good of a communicator as you are. You do this for a living, right? Plus, they've been drinking, yeah. <laughs> right? They don't, you know, their mind isn't working as quite as quick. Also, they're, you know, they're in a relaxing situation. You know, they're not really paying attention as much, right? Chris, I think uh, one of the things that one of the people that I really looked up to when I started reporting was uh, Michael Olson. Worked with us for some time in. in uh, uh, he used to talk about the best bartenders he ever saw were the people that were just able to nail right off the bat what that person wanted. Yeah. And he's, he used to classify people. He said there were people that wanted to be talked to, people that wanted to be left alone, people that wanted to be abused, people that wanted to be flirted with, sure. you know, people that just wanted to get drunk. But he, he had like nine or ten different classifications of people. And someone would sit down in his bar and within ten seconds he knew that that person wanted to be left alone. And he was all right with that. He'd just, you know, leave that person alone. Just exactly. get him a drink and not talk to him again. And, and right. you know, yeah, he hadn't done anything, but he was a great bartender to that person. No question. Because he knew. Yeah. Yeah, everybody's a different individual that comes to see you. Right. right. I mean, everybody's different. Everybody likes this or that. And, yeah. you know, you, you gotta, you got to nail that. You've got to be used to people right. and what they're like. And how they, you could got to see how they're interacting with the people as they're coming up to your bar. Sure. You know, exactly. Because you, you you're paying attention. you got to right? be. And it's, it starts out by caring. You know, service, customer service, that's the big thing. And that's so rare, I find, in the world, um, that you get treated well, like people actually care you know, that you're there. Um, anybody been to Disneyland? Yes. OK, what's, what's it called? The happiest place on earth. Exactly. And, you know, and the cleanest. And the cleanest, yeah. You'll never find no. garbage. Never. Right? And you go in there, and you know what? Everybody that I talk to, you know, I, I genuinely feel that they want me there. You know, that they're happy to see me. You know, and this is, you know, some people can go overboard. I mean, you can tell when somebody's being fake, right? I don't feel that. I feel like they're just genuinely happy to help me and serve me no matter what it is. Uh, same thing with, uh, with cruise lines oftentimes. They're awesome. Exceptional, right? These are big money places that do things right because they have to, and they realize that this is the smart way to do it. Well, you know, we can learn from that, you know? Make everybody feel special. Very important. A lot of us who work in nightclubs too. I mean, women women come there, but they they feel kind of threatened by the you know the, the all of the men trying to hit on them and stuff. So you have to make them feel comfortable and, right. and, and be very non-threatening and and protective and make the men buy them drinks. See the only one. <laughs> well, you know. I, actually, it's, Don, it's, Don just had a really good comment on that. The millennium. Be the only one that's treating them like a human being. Totally. Like yeah. Nice. Well yeah. That's a big thing. You know, being a woman in, in this world is tough. You know, I hear. Especially <laughs> 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 that's video eight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, here we go. How do I get myself into these things? All right. But getting out there, especially in a in a in a club, you know, a, a restaurant, a, a nightclub, um, you know, guys have been drinking, and, and so they get even worse than they are normally. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. You know, and bar some things that I think a, a good bartender should do is just to make the woman feel comfortable and just treat them like a person. And if they need a place to go to get away from all the craziness, hey, it's safe. You know, so as much as you'd like to, you know, don't hit on the women. Yeah. You know, That's if, the last thing they need is. You know, it really, it really is, and it's unprofessional. Now, I'm not saying that that hey, we don't like attention. And if they hit on you, well, that's great, you know, and that's, you know, we all enjoy that, right? 
but it's got to be their choice, right? Have the respect because they get that all night long, right? Also, just the sort of the, the standard line in this industry, or, you know, take care of the women, you know, and, and make it comfortable for the women, and the guys will come. You know, the guys will come to your place, right? So just, tr just treat them with respect and, uh, you know, take care of them. Ask them how the night's going. If there's something that you, know, you can sort of tell in their, their demeanor, you know, are you okay? You know, I will take the time to ask. I'll say, is there, is there anything I can do? What's the matter? Uh, just last, the other night, uh, I had a woman come up to me who was, uh, uh, you know, having a problem with, with a person, right? Well, the problem was very easy to solve. She could say no. But she didn't feel that way. She had been drinking and she was uncomfortable, right? And she came to me because uh, she trusted us, right? Actually, she came to you know, the other bartender, right, who just wasn't really sure how to handle it. Fair enough. And, and you know, he came to me because he wanted to make sure that it was handled properly. No problem. We discussed it. I decided to step in and, and take care of it. No problem. Right? I walked in. I had a little discussion with her. You know, she said, I'm not really comfortable. I don't know how to say no to this guy. And I said, well, you know, is he, is he really bothering you? Like, if it is, I'm happy to talk to him, like, politely and respectfully. You know, but if it's a problem you can solve, then I, I, I recommend you doing this. Just, hey, just tell them, no, thank you. I'm not interested tonight. Plain, you know, very easy to do. Well, you know, she wasn't feeling comfortable to do that. So you know what? I want to make her feel comfortable, right? So this is a gray area situation, you know, but I, I stepped in. I bring the guy over. I say, you know, hey, what's your name? You know, Todd, great. Nice to meet you. I'm Scott. You know what? The girl that you were just talking to, she's a little uncomfortable. She, she'd just rather sort of be left alone tonight. You know, don't want to get involved. I'm not, I'm not placing any blame or anything. She'd just kind of like be left alone. Right, he's like, oh, okay, no problem. Right? I'm using my power for good. Right? I'm not stepping on anybody. I'm not abusing. I'm not accusing. Right? I'm like, hey, cool, thanks very much. Hey, you know, we'll see you next round. Right? Nice. End of problem. Right. You're my hero. <laughs> <laughs> You're my hero. Uh, <laughs> Chris, you had a comment. Um, I think just in general business, uh, uh, as the business world works and how things become more technology, technology rises and changes every day and all those changes, the, the more technical the world of business gets, the more high-touch industries are vital. And uh, we, you know, we, we are on the way to being like baseball players, you know, because people are craving that high-touch personal because maybe they're in front right. of a screen all day. That personality, that, that, that personality. interaction. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. We have the opportunity to talk to people. And keep in mind that a lot of these people... You know, they don't have the kind of attention that we get, right? They're sitting in a, in a, in a desk someday, somewhere in a cubicle. Nobody talks to them all day. Nobody pays any attention to them. You know, when we are able to go, hey, how are you? Welcome to Roxy. You know, I'm Scott. Nice to meet you. Wow. I mean, it's so easy for me to do, but it can really make someone's night. Yeah, you have the power to make or break someone's night, just like you yeah. said. Absolutely. And, it, and you do. You completely affect their night. And, and it's... All because of what you did and all yeah. because of the way you made me feel, just like you did that time. Yeah. I had the best night that night. Right. And it's up to you. And you know, you don't have to do that. But boy, if you do, it can make such a difference. Oh, yeah. it's, it's a good return for you, too. And yeah. You feel so good at yeah. helping this person out yeah. and, you know, steering them in the right way that they will have fun that night. And you know, they love you. We had a VIP you party. You know and you get paid to do this. We had a VIP party um, about a month and a half ago. And we really wanted this one regular who only comes in on Fridays to come down. And I guess he had a really rough week and he was jet lagged and he came in and he had a little too much to drink. And one of the bartenders uh, that I work with was, felt really guilty. And he phoned him like a bunch of times and said, I shouldn't have called him down. I shouldn't have done this. I shouldn't have served him this much. Right. You know, maybe I, I totally misjudged his character or something. He ended up getting his girlfriend to drive the guy's car to their house. And the guy, they took him home and let him crash on his couch. Got him up in the morning, made him breakfast, totally, you know, drove him home. Nice. You know, I mean, that says a lot. You know, you have to be willing to take care and take responsibility for your clientele as well. Yeah. You're going way above and beyond the call of duty Absolutely. to make sure that they feel special and they're taken care of, right? Absolutely. Right? Excellent. What are some other things you think of when you think of an exceptional bartender? Clint. Friendliness. You want to be friends with a bartender. Everybody wants to be. Yeah. I mean, one of the first examples of that. <laughs> <laughs> Not that kind of friends. So... <laughs> I mean, one of the one of the first ones I came to, uh, I came to the Rocks to come see Scott. Scott wasn't there, but he he told me about Chris, mm -hmm. and I came up and said, "Hi, Chris," and I didn't know who he was. And he's like, "Hey, how you doing? Welcome to the Roxy. Hey, uh, Scott told me to come down. You know, and all of a sudden we were talking. We had a great night, and then the next thing, like uh, four months later, five months later, I come in there. Totally remembers. Yeah. Right at the front door, he's like, "Hey, don't know your name, but Kirk. I remember you." Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's all right. Good, yeah. Right. And I mean, it was like four and months later. It makes you feel like a god. Yeah. yeah. First yeah. time I met. Especially if you had some people with you, all of a sudden you look like you a look big like shot, that. right? Yeah. 
right. It's yeah. nice. It makes you feel good. Yeah, Mark. Yeah. The first time I met Chris was the same thing. Um, totally just not the average bartender. It's like, no. it's like, hi, my name's Chris. Do you like Jack Daniels? Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, <laughs> kind of, yeah. Excellent. It worked, yeah. yeah. W. Dale. An interesting story. A friend of uh, James and I, his name is Rhino. He's a great bartender. He's now a hairdresser. He's, uh, uh, yeah, go figure. And he's, and he's bald. Okay, but anyway, he said one night, him and I were working together, uh, and a customer came up to him and said, with a bit of a distraught look on her face, she said, what is the irony in this? And she looked at him and I, and he said, what are you talking about? The irony in what? You know what? Help me out here. She said, I'm here, had to pay to get in, paying for drinks, and I'm having nowhere near as good a time as you guys are, getting paid back there, yeah. working, because we were just having fun, as we do. Excellent. And if a customer sees that to the point where they'd mention that to you, yeah. like, you know what? They're coming back. Yeah. Again. Because they want to come and hang out with people who are having a good time. That's right. Yeah. Energy. Yeah. Karma. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I have a comment here on Michael Jordan, right? Exceptional <laughs> talent. Absolutely. Um, but I think what makes him sort of transcend the rest of the people is he's so watchable because he's having a good time. You know? He just genuinely enjoys what he's doing. Like, let's play. Yeah. You know, he's got that, let's go, you know? Exactly, right? He's enjoying what he's doing. And I think people go where people are, to a group, and where groups go are to hang around with, with good people. You know? Sheila. The one thing I'll say on that, because I'm not a bartender, but a, a customer, I don't like when the bar is having fun at the expense of me getting a drink. Yeah. That yeah. irritates me. Yeah. Like, if I look and there's one bartender hitting on a girl there, and there's two goofing around over there, and I'm still sitting there going... Yeah. That, that, like, I mean, I was in a bar in Hawaii, and it's horrible for that. I mean, Tell me about that. I, you can sit there for an hour and a half. You practically have to smack someone to get a drink. Right. And then they're all goofing around, or they're all hitting. It, that's horrible. Exactly. See, so it has to have, like, so a guideline. Back. It goes back to what Jerry said, right? You don't want to make fun of that customer, you know, for not knowing. You want to and include, sorry, you want to include them and in, bring them into your world, right? Like a lot of bartenders. Right. I went up to Whistler a while ago with a buddy of mine who's a phenomenal bartender. And we decided that we just go up for a night and go to every bar and just check it out. Right. And we went up there and our jaws hit the floor at, at, at the level of service up there because it was, we were buying bartender shots. We were trying to get involved with them. We were really making an attempt to, to meet people right. and to find out, you know, what the sort of scene was up there. First, first bar we went to, went in and we said, yeah, we'll have uh, three shots of Jagermeister. Would you care to join us for one? I'm sick. And walks away from us. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Really? And took the shot and cheers us, turned around, dumped it, and went down and started talking to his buddy. He dumped it. He dumped it. Oh, that's awesome. We're sitting there oh, after we tipped him like 15 bucks for three shots that we just <gasps> bought for him. Wow. Right? Yeah. And it's like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Get us behind this bar and we yeah. will like, you know. It's all sorts of things like that guy's doing wrong and we're not even going to get into it. <laughs> um, what are some other ways that we think of exceptional bartender? Um, as well as an exceptional bartender, I believe that the whole club is like getting back to that home thing. Uh, comfortability, especially when we talked on women and men and how when people come into a bar, they're represented, they're all dressed up and they're right. all coming in and they're, they want to have a good time or whatever like that. With the, with the We have Chris or... or Jeff, another manager at the front door, being a host, greeting people, welcoming, yes. welcoming them Very always, important. which, is, oh, yeah. which yeah. is definitely a great quality. From the beginning to the end. From the beginning. And then when they go up to the bar, the bartenders like Simone, oh my goodness, unbelievable yeah. with just getting them involved in what's exactly. going on. So making that home, you're in our house, yeah. you know, have a good time atmosphere, Huge. I think makes a great Be exceptional inclusive. bartender and staff. Huge, yeah. yeah. Sure. Well, I think the best part about the Roxy is, for me anyway, is not Let's only... Start with the Roxy. Yeah. No, no, <laughs> I mean, and I've, I've, I've traveled all over the world yeah. and sat down at bars, and, and what it is, is people, they, the bartenders will notice... <laughs> Bartenders will notice not only what you drink, but when your drink's almost done. Yeah, yeah. And then they also, yeah, and they also look at the speed you're drinking, so you don't have to always be going another, another. Like, I find it just comes all the yeah. time. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> they're anticipating yeah. what you need. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Exactly. They're thinking ahead, they're so it caring. is like being in someone's house, right? Because in some, if you Definitely. have people over, you watch when they're done their drink. Huge. And that makes you feel important, special, right? Grant. Um, I know at the bar that me and Mark work at, um, it's great to meet people at the door, whatever, welcome them, everything. People usually remember either the first or last thing that they see or totally. experience in the yeah. bar. Yeah. So at the end of the night, <clears throat> excuse me, we make sure that we're at the front door saying bye to everybody. Yeah. 
Like we always do. Nice. If we, we don't know their name, we're like, oh, there goes Ryan Coke. Have a good night. See you Saturday. So it's regular drinks too. Like people walk out. People walk out, and we'll have like sometimes we'll have a little competition. You can remember, you know, like double rise seven. She'll turn around with a yeah. twist. We're like, nice. And then yeah. we'll take turns. Like we'll nice. see who can get the most. And people really like. They're like, oh my god, you remember that? Excellent. Yeah, very cool. Again, you're just doing something that a normal bartender won't do. Right? And that's what our company is all about, trying to give you ideas about how to stand out. Right? We look for things that most bartenders do badly or not at all, and we excel at that. You know, go and make that happen. Right? All of a sudden, yeah, Mark. Like, uh, an exceptional bartender is a problem solver. Like just little tiny things that you know, the average guy wouldn't do. Um, every, you know, everything from, you know, I spilled my drink, can I get a new one? Well, uh, uh, I, I don't know, hang on a second. You know, you know, knowing, knowing what to do in those situations. Like, right. You're you know, prepared. Yeah. You're totally being prepared knowing right. how to you handle know, those situations. Obviously, you're the leader. You're the creative problem solver, right? When somebody hires you, they're not hiring you uh, because they want to babysit you, right? You know, the good places that hire good people, they train them properly, which what I mean by that is they tell them what they want from them. Simple as that, right? And then they leave them the hell alone. You know, go, do, go be the star. Go be the, you know, the reason that people come hang out here, right? If you have a problem that I can't do, great, come to me. Right? But they set up procedures so they know what to happen. And they're going to know exactly how you want to deal with that problem. Right? Dave? Well, I notice like, because I'm a bartender, I go into a bar and I guess I overanalyze too and watch how things are done. So I, I always uh, accentuate the positive by like dancing or pumping up the energy, like making myself look goofy even right. sometimes. And, yeah. You know, because sure. people don't like to be looked at. Dave, you, goofy? Or you, you. <laughs> 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 what would you like? <laughs> Did you? You know, stuff like that. You know, but I like, because people are like, whoa, you know, and then they, you wouldn't believe it. It's almost like the, the shoulders go down and it's like, oh, wow, okay. Now I, it is, it's such a relaxing feeling when I. There's no way I can look stupid in here. No yeah, offense, basically, but that's, yeah. totally yeah. that's totally yeah. it. That's totally it. That's the point, you know. Actually. Look at that. <laughs> I won't go in. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. So you're making them feel comfortable totally. no matter what. Excellent. What are some other things you think about? Yeah. Getting back to the problem solving, that's an excellent point that Mark made because even being a porter behind the bar or whatever, even if I'm just doing glassware or whatever, you have a lot of people just asking, hey, do you have a cloth? Do you have matches? Do you know this guy's name? Do you know this, whatever? And I, so I think an, an exceptional bartender has to deal with many different tasks from all the customers and quickly. Totally. And, ba and right. being able to not go, I don't have time for a cloth. Can you just ask somebody else? Or yeah. Yeah. I don't have matches. No, I'm just smoking right. here or whatever. So you have like to be that. fast. You're able to just right. go. Yep, 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 yep. And so the best was talking about be friendly, right? Be accommodating, care, be fast. Jerry, let's face it. There's a lot of people who do come to bars because they're angry and they have a lot of aggression and they want to let that out. But a lot of times we're the focus point of that, right? Right. And um, I always make it a a mission of mine to change somebody's evening, like give them a 360 and always send them away from the bar thinking about what they just did. If a guy comes up to me and starts freaking out for something that I had no control over, right, right because he's had a bad day or he's just, uh, you know, surly or owly or whatever, um, I'll buy him his drink. He'll treat me like shit for the first, you know, five seconds that he meets me and then I'm just like, hey, here's, here's a shot, we're doing a shot, you need one. Well, you can't a rough day. Out, right? Yeah. Right. You know, who's going to be walking away from the bar feeling better about themselves, right? right? So Obviously, I'm that. not in the wrong. Right. And he'll maybe think, oh, maybe I'll sort of, you know, I'll have the guy back maybe ten minutes later going, hey, listen, I'm sorry when I first came up here, I didn't mean to take out my aggression exactly. on you. I'm going to buy you a shot this time or I'm going to, you know. That's a great point. What he's done is he's not risen to the arms race. Well, no. Someone's come in and abused him, right? Because whatever reason, right? <laughs> and you've taken that in, you went, whoosh, all right? And you responded positively. Yeah. You, know, you didn't let it get to you. Bartender's always cool. Yeah, Nothing can happen, you know, that's gonna piss me off, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, that, that I'm gonna show, it's just not gonna happen. Short of somebody physically jumping the bar, trying to do me bodily harm, <laughs> right? I'm just not gonna lose my cool, so it's not gonna happen. Now, easier said than done, yeah. right? I'm not saying that it's not gonna affect me inside, but I'm never gonna show it, well. right? I think he's excellent because, well, really, when anyone's been in a bad mood, and we all have been, you don't want to be a jerk. No one wants to be the asshole. No one wants to be the jerk. And sometimes people just need to get it out. And you are giving the, them a bigger yeah. reason to come back next week and be Absolutely. treat another bartender across town because you got all up in their Absolutely. face. Absolutely. People get on airplanes sometimes and just scream at me for everything an airline's ever done. And I find the best thing to do is just stand there and say, you have something to get out. You just go. 
and I let them go. <laughs> That's how, like, you know, they can yell and they can... And you may, you may regret the fact that you created this, but that could end up being your best regular. And oh, every exactly. time they're in a bad mood, they come and see you and they go, you know what, I had the worst day, you're the only person that can get me out of this. Yeah. Let's, yeah. Have a, let's have a drink, let's chat. Exactly. But he's already in a good mood to you, so it's already on their eyes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you've taken a negative and you're turning it into a positive. You're looking at something that most bartenders do badly, you know, which is handle someone's problems. Right? Take it in, respond, listen to them, pay attention. You know, take you know, the 30 seconds or the minute that it might take to show them you care about it. Right? Go, you know, and if they get into it personal, you know, it's about you, it's not personal. They get upset. Hey, you know, I'm sure if you met my mom, you'd feel differently. <laughs> you know? There's just nothing they can say to make me get upset. Right? I'm always going to respond positively and be, and be calm. Because right? with the calmer I am, I'm going to dial them down. Right? Just, you know, that's the best way to do it. Nothing good is ever going to come out of you getting hot. Right? Yeah. Uh, a couple specifics. If if it's still legal to smoke, like anywhere outside under your, your bed at home or something, uh, wherever you're at, lighting cigarettes is a huge one. Huge. Yeah. Huge. Uh, just people notice that right off the bat. Exactly. Everybody. Now just having men, women. Men, women. Everybody. everybody. Yeah. Absolutely. Like go to go to any go to any length to light someone's cigarette. Totally. You know that gets remembered. Actually, there's a story with Scott, uh, um, one uh -oh. of the one of the instructors that uh, that works with us. Uh, brought a friend in to, to see Scott one night when it was still legal to smoke in the bars here and uh, and, and Scotty kind of out of the corner of his eye caught the guy pulling out a cigarette and lit a cigarette and uh, you know didn't think about it for the rest of the night and the guy um, from out of town went back to his hometown and and uh, told someone about it in his hometown who came to see the instructor in Vancouver again brought him to see Scott this other person and he knew about it and he was like waiting for Scott to pull out, pull out the lighter and light a cigarette and he got it but it was remembered like all the way out of town. It's wild. It's when somebody orders a bottle of Coors Light yeah. and they want a glass, if you have the time, obviously, you right. can pour it for them. You know, like, absolutely. And that's or if you see that their jug, they have a jug of beer and their beer's getting down to here, right. you fill up the glass, yeah. and people are like, Little "Wow, things. cool." Yeah. And Little they tiny, totally get into service. it. And yeah, and they feel the so special. Too, right? Yes, oh, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Want another one? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that comes with eye contact too, like the filling up the glass thing. Always look at the person yeah. who you're filling up the glass And you for. can talk to because them and you establish a friendship yeah. with them yeah. and they, they totally feel great. Haven't you had that ha I've had this happen to me at a restaurant or maybe you don't want to drink, or maybe drink as much or maybe you're, you know, driving and someone doesn't even look and they just start filling everything up. See, I hate that. Oh yeah, no, you know what I mean? you're like, right. That's, and that's what's effective if the person looks at you or looks at the person beside you, maybe your boyfriend going, like, don't give him any more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure. Be aware of the Healthy. situation. Yeah, right? exactly. Definitely. Yeah. The cigarette thing is great because it keeps you scanning, yeah. right? I've always really loved that because I don't want anybody to light their cigarette you know, in my bar. Boom. I will, it, when, like, thank you very much. Uh, when, when even the bar's packed, that is the best time for me to light people's cigarettes because it stands out more, right? I'm looking for something that bartenders do badly or not at all, and I excel at that. Right? I'll move out of my way. I'll run across the end of the bar. Boom, snap, boom, and I light it and I'm gone. I don't wait around for a thank you. All right, I'm back and I'm making drinks. Even if I'm, I'm you know, I'm pouring a drink, you know, you know, I got, got the pop gun going, look over here, bang, bang. That impressed something because you, they know you're really busy. All right, do you have a comment? I was just gonna say on the pouring the beer, if you have time, sometimes it's even better if you don't. You know what I mean? And they go, man, this place is packed and she's still, the, the yeah. little bits of service that people just can't believe. And, you know, hopefully from my point of view, you should always have a support, you should always have a support staff behind you, like the management, right away. You go get something from that table. You should tell them what to do. That way you have the time for sure. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's part of the whole service of the bar, not right. just a good bartender or a waitress server or whatever, a good bar. The way everything runs. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Smooth. To expand on that, uh, <laughs> like, is it a wrap up time? Wrap up. <laughs> <laughs> no wrap up. Actually, Chris, Chris, uh, we have a lot of uh, foreigners that come in, and all the time they're maybe this much left in the pitcher or whatever like that. And I was, and some they're off dancing, and the glasses are all empty and stuff. And I, I'm frustrated. I'm like, I don't know what to do. Should I just take away the glass, or whatever like that? And Chris says, "Why don't you just pour it for him? Pour it for him like that." And I ended up doing that, and I still do that now. Even if it's just there's nothing left in the pitcher, that one little drop in there, and you always get a smile. You always get a, you know a thank you. Yeah, and, because and you care note, about making sure they get what they pay for. For sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And to note on uh, Shu's point there, the 
the fact that you know if they don't want any more, you always should make an acknowledgement before you do that. You know, like you yeah. know, absolutely. If it comes out again. You're caring. You're paying attention to the situation. You're caring about the customer. That's something that right. I picked up on. Okay. So, what are some other things you think about as a great bartender, exceptional? James. I think, um, kind of a two-part process. One is is grace under fire, yeah. and the second part about it is sort of getting your customers to identify in a positive way with the fact that you're slammed. Okay. Yeah. Um, I've had situations before where I've just been like five deep, just going nuts. Right. And you turn to somebody, you make eye contact, you just start howling. And you realize, I'm buried alive here. <laughs> <laughs> just want you to know that. <laughs> but, but they get the message, they know that you're kidding about it. Yeah. And it's nice because everybody starts to relax because they know that you're not about to spontaneously combust behind mm -hmm. the bar. Sure. Yeah. You're, you're yeah. being relaxed, you're being cool yeah, under a pressure mm -hmm. situation. Uh, Jerry. Um, one good thing that I always, always find works is um, always having eye contact with your crowd while you're making a drink. Like yeah. if, you're, if, you're, if you're serving one person and you don't want to, you're trying to pay attention to them as much as possible, obviously, right? But also just have a look around and let people know you're there. A lot of people try to yeah. budge through the line and a lot of people are going, ah, right? They yeah. usually want water or whatever, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's true, it's true. Yeah. But, but just, uh, I, I often give them like, like orders. I'm like, listen, I got you, I got him, yeah, exactly. and then I got you, yeah, yeah. and then I got you. And then everybody else will just have to watch and wait, right? That's yeah. perfect, you know? right? Because you're acknowledging that they're there, Their and presence. that's all they really want to know. Right? Yeah. Okay, he knows yeah. I'm here. Yeah. Huge, really very important. Reagan. That's what I was just going to say, is okay. as long as people are acknowledged, that's all they want to yeah. know is that you know I'm here, and I exactly. want something, and you're getting to me as soon as you can. Right. And I usually tell people in front of me, I go, I always look in the crowd, and if there's a girl behind me, I just go, yeah, I'll, I'll be finished up with you because my wife's right behind you. <laughs> <laughs> so I look at her, and I go, my wife, and she's like, what the? <laughs> I don't say that, Chris. <laughs> One thing extremely important, and I think this group has forgotten, uh, because we, it's second nature, is your grooming and appearance, your dress, yeah. your persona, like, yeah. Your uniform, yeah. clean, yeah. pressed, shaven. Yeah. You, you look around the you look around the room. Yeah. Everyone here is totally. for this. Yeah. And it's what? A clean bar. Clean bar is a happy, a happy bar. bar. Yeah. 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 yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Communication <laughs> with the staff. Yeah. Communicating with your coworkers is like integral. Right. So if you're arguing with customer. somebody else, it just spills right over into the whole club. Absolutely. Everybody can yeah. feel yeah. it. The no problem. Leave it at home. Take yeah. it downstairs. Take it wherever. But do not do it in front of the customers. Exactly. Clint. See, in our bar, we, we keep getting this one thing going where we get uh, we get them to put their beer bottles on our head as they're in the lineup so we can see it. And then we'll see it. Okay. <laughs> back of the lineup. You got all those people standing there. I got a Canadian, a Heineken. And okay. Pull it up, and they're like this over top, and there's nice. no change because they just give you the five or the and ten, they're and they're just they're out of there. That's all they That's want. That's an awesome yeah. idea. They're That's hilarious. They're really absolutely rich. hilarious. They're sitting there. Really love to see it. Yeah. 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 I don't know. By the way, but you're, the reason why the reason why you're able to make that work is because you're being a leader, right? Is yeah. you're making this happen. You're making it, making it fun, yeah, it's right? Just fun. It's quick time. Done. Did you have a comment, Chris? Uh, I just wanted to say that it, to make a great bartender, I, I often uh, think, try to envision myself being at a deli, an Italian meat market, and, I, and you're handling people and the lights are bright, and you, are, you need to drop your ego and serve the people, yeah. and uh, just focus on each individual's needs, and think, of it, think that they have numbers, and you just, okay, that process where that person's a priority, yeah. because it's up to you to decide who you're going to take care of next. Yeah. And you don't have to, you're not, it's the only difference between a deli is, is that it's up to you who you serve next. Yeah. And if you know that somebody can wait, then you can let them wait and, you know, continue a conversation with them because they're beautiful. Or just, whatever, just be aware, of, drop your ego and right. be aware yeah, of Yeah, leave, leave the attitude at home is a huge thing. One thing that Chris has always said, and I've always got this from him, is take care of the people. Like, I take care of the people. You know, sometimes he'll call me at home and go, we're working tonight, and, you know, I just got a feeling we got to really take care of the people tonight. Right. You just got this. this it is a tip. The, the second half of that is that the money will take care of itself. Sure. And it does. Don't even worry about yeah. the money, right? Absolutely will take care of itself. I it. think uh, acknowledging customers outside of work when you're yeah. totally. down the street, yeah. 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 in, yeah. and yeah. someone says, hey, you work at the Roxy, you're like, hey, how you doing, man? Yeah. And guaranteed 90% of them come there that night yeah. when they see you. Yeah. I've seen people nice. on the street, they'll be there that night. Good idea. I give out my cell number. Kirk gives out his pager number. 
to any VIPs, anybody, anybody who we think so this is are, are good people, it's really like, hey, good. listen. And like, I don't give that out to half the people I know don't have my cell number, but I'll give it out to a customer if I think they're they're you know upstanding or. Yeah, it's it's really always nice people. to have the business cards too, you know, with the right. sort of logo of the club you're working at with your totally. name. I mean, Free you, you know, totally. you know, I'll, you know, write your number on the back. I'll try totally. and get you in the line next time or whatever. They like that. That's a really good point. Um, what about uh, uh, what about some things that you know that you really, really want to stand? What are the major things that, that when you see a, an exceptional bartender that jumps to your mind? Right? I think just you know, just have fun, just enjoying what what they do. You know, smiling. God, smile more. Yeah. You know, it's okay to smile. Don't feel self-conscious or you have to be, you know, you're going to be uh, you're crazy or weak to smile. Not at all. A lot of people don't have the confidence to be able to do that. I think that's really important. You know, smile more. Greet them. Relax. Don't be flustered looking. Exactly. Nothing's worse than watching bartenders like this and you're going, okay, wait, no, I don't need it right now. Like, exactly. Yeah. Actually, we got one thing that uh, actually Michael Olson is over here. Hey, Mike. Hey, Mike. Hi, Mike. Hi. Uh, now, a little uh, history on Michael. At, uh, we used to work together many, many years ago uh, when we both started flipping. Uh, and then uh, uh, we did some interesting things, some tours. And, um, but one thing that Michael always does is when somebody comes in the bar, he'll maybe ring a bell. Sometimes they have a ship's bell. Or he'll make, get everybody's attention. And he's like, Scott Young is in the house! <laughs> and like, like, whoa. And he does that for all the people that he thinks are special. Right? And so all of a sudden you walk in and you're like, wow, I feel really good like the tension is on me right well he's got enough attention he doesn't need that he can share you know it's not that big a deal right there's all sorts of things that we can do as bartenders to make that customer feel really special remember we talked earlier about a lot of people don't have a lot of attention in their lives right we can share some of that um, get them involved so right away you can make them a star for a second and just have them beam like that's a huge thing Clint. See, that's like I go to these guys, bar, Mark and Grant's um, down at the Rio. They, they're amazing. They shut off the music. And I'd be like, Clint's in here from Steve T's. Look at the guy. He's up at the bar right now. Great. Ha like, welcome. It's oh, like, God. <laughs> Everyone just sort of looks over and, hey, how well, you doing? Why do we do that, though? We really we want people in the industry in our bar, man. They, I mean, they're the people that, you know, they're always patient. They're usually almost always understanding that they're usually pretty good tippers. Okay. And uh, they have money in their pockets. They just made tips. They've, they've got money to burn. So those are the people we try to promote as much as we can. And it's Definitely. great. People have come to my bar out of it. Hey, you're the guy from you know, Steve T. It's great. We, we heard about you from the Rio. Exactly. Wow, thank yeah. you. Starts to spread. Good point. Great. You're talking about things that don't happen in your average establishment. And that's what makes the Roxy and these other places. And it totally changes everything. And it makes the mood and the atmosphere, which is the number one thing yeah. that brings people back. And the average yeah. place doesn't have that. I know. And you not know what? At all. That's kind of what our company is all about. Is it's just not that that you know we're so special or anything. It's just you know the par is seems to be really low. Yeah. You know, you know what's considered average is is to me it's just unacceptable. And they're just the smallest little things. Exactly. They're just the and they're so things. easy to do. Yeah. 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 And they yeah. don't cost a dime. Don't cost a dime. Exactly. I mean, you guys are getting the exact point. You know, take care of the people, do all the little things. You know, make them feel special, right? And a lot of the world just doesn't get this yet. Right, because maybe the services industry is growing in their country, whatever. But it's so important. The, uh, the excitement and the fun for them. Yeah. Energy yeah. kinetic. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Now, what are some? We talked about what is it? You know, an exceptional bartender. Um, actually, one, one other point I forgot to make. Um, you know, you want to have a lot of drink recipes. You know, do you have something to offer somebody? Now, you don't need a hundred thousand drinks in your mind. Right? Most places you know, make an average of 20, 30, 40 drinks you know, in an evening. But just know what those are in that area and be able to offer them different tastes, different styles, different kinds of drinks. Right? So that's really important. You know? But mainly you want to be fast. Right? You want to be efficient. You want to be friendly. Right? You want to be the all-knowing bartender, be able to suggest something. Right? You want to be able to handle problems. Right, all these things, right? Ian. I think it's really interesting the entire time we're talking about what makes a, an exceptional bartender. Not one of us has mentioned flipping bottles. Yeah, And exactly. the reason being is it's totally not integral. No, it's not. You know, it's not, it's not the mainstay of being. And the people that, that think it is have lost the, the point. They're not quite getting it. Yeah, they're yeah. just like missing the point. Definitely like good point. Speaking through totally language. secondary. Yeah. Yeah. And it's extra special. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. exactly. It's yeah. a tool and, on your tool belt. You use and, at your discretion. Right, and coming from a, from a group of people who, there's a lot of people in here who are really good at flipping bottles, right? But I think the proper way of looking at it is it is just a tool, right? Really important. Jerry, good point. I think a good bartender also educates his, his, his clientele. Yeah. Like a lot of people come up and they're like, uh, just Ryan Coke, you're, you're making it for him, right? And, oh, I don't want that much ice, and I didn't like it that, that way. 
right. uh, instead of being negative, just explain to them how they should order it next right. time. Yeah. W. Dale. A uh, couple Saturdays ago, interesting James pointed out about being buried three deep, five deep, whatever. It was a Saturday night, and there was quite literally eight or ten or twelve people staring at me waiting for drinks. And the customers in front of them weren't wor asking for a single rye or a single Corona or a single Budweiser. It was big orders, some of which had to be blended, shaken, stirred, or, you know. So I, I knew there was no way of getting out of it, so I just thought, screw it. I made a dozen shooters. Put them out on the bar, passed them to all the customers waiting. He said, nobody waits here for a drink. We all did a shooter, broke the ice, wow. and then we're cool after that. Yeah, and I got like three or four or five dollar tips from all those guys. That's exceptional. It works good. Good. All right. Any other ideas? But what really jumps to your mind? Oh, I was just going to wrap it up by saying that <laughs> <laughs> I believe an exceptional great bartender is a bar smart extreme <laughs> qualified bartender. Oh, There's a plug. And what would be Someone give that man a 20. <laughs> All right. A couple questions. Why do we want to be exceptional? Why would we bother making the effort of being Great. What are some benefits that are going to happen? Money in our pocket. You'll enjoy your job. Okay. Customer money. We're probably going to make more money, right? Connections. Okay. Connections. What do you mean by that? I mean, like, I've had lots of people who've come up to me and and had remembered me from before, and they might have an opportunity that they think I'd be good for, or you know, I have somebody who's you know, like I, I have a bunch of guys who are uh, taking a renting a yacht for August long weekend, Thanks. and they're building a bar. They're engineering students, and it's their big summer party that they have every year, and they want me to come down and bartend, and they're paying sure. me an obscene amount of money for August long weekend. Excellent. You know, and you know, just stuff like that. Just because I. I Treated them nice. Right, because you do your job properly, you take care of people, and you're going to have other opportunities. Like, um, okay, what are some standard, maybe next step jobs or careers you can get from this? Because not everybody wants to be a bartender forever. Fine, right? But where can you go? Management. What can, management, okay, you can go to management, definitely. You can learn, learn the business, you know, show them you're professional, know how to, you know, understand it. What else? Owner. I mean, look at, well, yeah, look at our buddy W. Dale. W. Dale. He's owning his own yeah. bar. Yeah, he's owning his own bar. Nice. Like, that's the final. That's the, I don't want to say the final achievement, but that's what pinnacle. You know, I spent my life doing. Yeah. I look and I, when I found that out, I was like, awesome. You know, like it's someone who knows what they're doing. Exactly. And has taken pride in themselves and has made a place that they can call home. Yeah. Yeah. You got to know that place is going to be run well. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. What are some other areas that you can go to? Reps. Liquor reps. You can go to be a liquor rep or beer rep, absolutely, because you know the industry. Right. What else? Chris. Uh, well, just like when I was clearing up with Chris Dobson before about the service industry, you can just you can find uh, a passion uh, on regular hours, <laughs> daylight hours, yeah. if you choose, yeah. and uh, where you where you can serve more people, yeah. or you, or whatever it is. And having a bartending job with the end in mind is uh, is amazing because the lifestyle is great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can wake up at 11 and work. If you work every day from 11 till 3 yeah. on your passion, if it's not bartending, yeah. you will achieve your success in life after bartending. Yeah. It'll just happen. No question. Now, a little history on Chris here. He uh, began his own business a number of years ago, uh, and he, uh, he sells um, nutritional products and all sorts of different things. And he's got so many connections that he's made through, through bartending because, you know, people trust him. Right? They know him, they trust him, and he's got something that he can offer, and I probably would, would not explain that as well as you would, but, but you know, you've, you're make, using the context that you've made, because right? they know you, they trust you, and you're able to present something else to them, right? whether they're interested or not, and that's a huge thing. Right? What, else, what are some other ways you can go? You can, you can actually go anywhere. Once you've learned how to be a customer service and you have the personality, you can go to any job and it's going to be an attribute. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it's like I'm a flight attendant, but that's airline. You can go to cruise. You can go to an office. You can right. be an event coordinator. You can right. be a caterer because you've learned how to take control and work service. for yourself. Exactly. But one thing that everyone in this room right. has in common, being in this industry, is able to juggle you know, multiple, multiple problems. Yeah, yeah, multiple problems in your Huge. head. Huge. Regardless what they are, you know, yeah. solution oriented. Right. Totally. Yeah. Get the dug in the back. You can start your own bartending school. <laughs> <laughs> We can call it bar smarter. Thank but you. Part, part of that, no joke, is what I tell every person that works at the Roxy is, I, unfortunately, I do not want career bartenders or career servers. I want you to use it as a springboard and make a school, make a place, make something, but use your contacts that you make through from 
the daycare worker that comes in once a month to the stockbroker that I just made 10 grand off in a week yeah. because I he told me, hey, this might work out. Exactly. And uh, invested a bit of money, boom. Took off huge. My best friend now. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, it's literally endless. Doctors, right. lawyers, nutritionalists, Contacts. All come out to party. Yep. Exactly. There are fringe, there's fringe benefits out there. Other things, anything in sales, mm -hmm. yes. you know, definitely a big thing in sales. I'm going to touch on Ian for a second. Um, now, Ian's one of our instructors and, and phenomenal bartender and service giver. Um, he decided to go during the daytime and you know, he now sells computer systems. And he walked in, and I'm going to, you know, kind of beam about you for a second, but, like, was it in your first month you broke, like, the, the entire sales worker? He just kicked some serious butt in the, right away. He walked in there and did exceptionally well. And it's continuing to set sales records. Right? Right? You know, well done, Ian. But the point is, there's places you can jump into, and the bottom line is the skills that he developed. You know, he's told me some stories about challenging situations. They're just not going to bother them. The next person that, you know, that you're working with is going to get very upset and not handle that very well. Well, there's nothing that's going to happen that's going to upset Ian that he's not going to be able to handle. Right? And you learn that by trial by fire, by being in this industry. Uh, and I personally had a situation a couple weeks ago. Somebody, yeah. <laughs> Fire no, no, no. Driving sales. Well, and becoming a bartender in the first place. He took initiative. He sat at my bar. He was 19 oh, yeah. years old, and said, "That looks really cool. I want to be able to do that. How can I do that?" Yeah. Here's Scott Young's card, and look at him now. He's selling computers and making all kinds of cash and working in the daytime. I got stinking cool. drunk at Michael's bar one day. <laughs> <laughs> I met my mom and yeah. got her to pay a $50 deposit to take Scott's course. That's how that happened. <laughs> nice. That's, that's, I network him. Do you? Uh, <laughs> uh, thank you very much, and you awesome. know everything works out well. Uh, <laughs> you know, but there are situations that are going to happen in your regular, in your personal life. You know, that are going to you know be challenging. I tell you, there's nothing that can happen in my personal life now that that's going to get me upset. Yeah. I mean, nothing that's going to compare to some screaming drunk guy yelling at me in front of you know 100 people. It's just it's not. So right there, all of a sudden, my life I think is going to be is a higher quality. Because I'm not gonna, I'm gonna communicate well, um, and you get things. Coping and, skills. Sorry. You get coping skills. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah, big Which thing. Which is the biggest thing. People and you right. learn not to sweat the small stuff. Yeah. Totally. Learn when totally. It's well, that's it. Sarah. Because I think Talk all of these qualities yeah. we're talking about are not just qualities of a good bartender, qualities of a good person who's yeah. learned yeah. things and who can yeah. communicate and accept yeah. diversity yeah. and challenge. So. Yeah, and I'm glad you mentioned that because. Uh, People look at our company, we've been teaching for like over seven years now, and sure, we teach bartending, we teach the flipping and all that fun, but um, you know, that's really on the surface. All we're really saying is, you know, be good to people. You know, be a good person, take care of people, be respectful, be friendly, be genuine, care about people, and, and good things will happen. So um, that's sort of the subtle thing that hopefully gets through there. But yeah, you know, do that in, in this industry, I mean, in anything, everybody's going to do well. Especially in this industry, make yourself proud at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's right. Take pride yeah. Yeah. I mean, Great. Take pride in what you do. Excellent. Clint. A few things I always got. Like if I phone him up, how's your day going? Exceptionally well. Every single time. Yeah. Exceptionally well. Good morning, you know, sunshine. Yeah. What's so yeah. great about it? I mean, he's like, I could get hit by a bus the next day, like tomorrow. Do I want to be hit by the bus frowning or smiling? <laughs> yeah. I don't know whether you'd be proud. But, yeah. but still, I mean, you gotta, you got to be happy all the time. Thank you. I'll, I'll make a little note on that, maybe a little more serious note. I had a couple friends uh, die this year um, that I knew, and it happened very suddenly. And I thought, wow, first of all, how tragic and, you know, really stunned me. But, you know, I always try to look for something positive. So after I was finished, you know, being stunned, I thought, well, you know, what can I take out of this? And I thought, uh, I, I had a friend who died. Uh, he, he, was, he was 30 years old. He went in a doctor, didn't feel well. Um, they said he had cancer. And they said he had six weeks to live. Uh, and actually, he died eight days later. Um, he had he'd just gotten married. He, he had a, a daughter born like, the, like a week after he died. I mean, fully tragic, you know, and I don't want to be, you know, be a negative on this, but after I got through with it, I figured, you know, what do I want my next eight days to be like? Plain and simple. And I think we all have stories like this, you know. And you know what? I want my next day, eight days to be exceptional, you know. I don't want to be a used car salesman attitude about this, but I want to enjoy my life, right? And if I'm going to be like that, that's a great attitude to have as a bartender or whatever you do in life, you know, because you could get hit by a bus tomorrow. We don't know. Right, so enjoy today, Ian. This entire thing, like from the moment that I started with BarSmart, honestly, to to the to today, has been like an advanced course in common sense. 
That's really all it is. Yeah. Eh? This stuff is not hard to figure out, right? No. And you know, being good to people is as stupid as it sounds. It's totally corny. Yeah. But change your life? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? What do I usually say about stuff that you know that we think is basic? You know, anybody know? It's not rocket science. No. It's just. You know, it's basic things, but some people tend to forget the little things. You, know? you need to continually repeat to the people that are below you or you're supporting you that, because people, just like advertising, you have to say yeah. it 20 times. Sure. And you should not, you shouldn't, just like your customers, right. you have to say it 20 times before, before it sinks in that they can learn and move on. Right. Sure. The main thing, I mean, we just got to show by example, right? I mean, get back to the bartending. You know, we want to be good people, you know, and we want to be exceptional, and good things will happen. Right. So what are some other ways that we, a place that we can jump off and to use as a springboard? We talked about sales, right? Um, I know you like that. You're a good actor. You, you want to be an actor? Yeah, I work with uh, Nels. He's uh, yeah. in the new Sean Penn movie with Jack Nicholson and Sam Shepard. And, yeah, and Sean Excellent. Penn's directing it. And Sean Penn comes into our bar all the time, picked him up from work the other night, took him out to a pre-party. Nice. Cool. Just like, Ooh. you know, this is, this is the type of, and, and he came here, he's been here for less than a year. Yeah. He came here last year from Texas, yeah. moved up, right. and just started bartending and, and, and plugging his connections and doing it very well. Excellent. Well, you know, you know, so acting. You can do anything. anything modeling. Anything that you wanted to do. Uh, what else? I mean, you get so many opportunities. Travel. You know, travel Major is a big travel. thing. Travel, yeah. yeah. Good opportunity. Just even the little things, too. I've been courtside for three Grizzlies games this year for free. Yeah. Just from regulars who've come benefits. in and said, hey, man, thanks for the other night. Exactly. Like, wow, okay. Chris. When you brought that up, part of the being a good bartender is actually, whether you do or not, making them believe you actually care about what they do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If they're telling you a story, you listen to it. You know, you're pouring your drinks and you're listening, you're not like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know? You gotta throw a baby in there once in a while. But it's just be real and right. make them feel that they're the most important thing in the bar. Because they are right at that moment. Boom. You know, and it, it's like Chris says, I think it's better to say to someone, I'm interested in your story, but I'm really busy right yeah, now, yeah. than to play the yeah, yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah. 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 Come yeah. tell me a bit. Come yeah, be a bit. honest. Be honest. Or right. say, you know, I can't do Five this minutes. now. Yeah. Okay. So just get, just get as emotional as them about it. Yes. And then relate to them, get to the, on their emotional level, and say, put your finger up. And, and now yeah, okay, 10 seconds. Oh, I, I want to I hear this, but, you know, I got two people to hear. I'll be back in, I'll be back in 30 seconds. Right? Acknowledge them. Right now, there are a couple other fringe benefits that I want to get get to before we wrap up with Russ. <laughs> right? Is is you know the reasons why we want to be exceptional, and I think there's some real fringe benefits we can get. Um, first of all, let's talk about wages. I mean, what's the average wage for a bartender? Minimum, minimum wage. Is that written in stone? No. 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 Do I get minimum wage? No. Probably not. <laughs> right? Probably not. Probably but you know, but it's, it's 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 supply and demand, right? If I'm if I'm, you know, going out of my way to be exceptional, right, and I'm bringing more people in the bar, I'm doing all these great things, right, to make, to be good at my job, right. Well, then maybe I'm more valuable to my to my employer, right. Now, there's lots of ways to be valuable, and it's not just the, I mean, the like you mentioned, the wage. It's a minimal thing, right. So it's the least thing that I really think about. There's some other ways that I can get fringe benefits from my club, right. What are some other ways? Bonuses. Sorry. Bonuses. Sales bonuses. You know, the best, some of the best places are really have some sort of incentive program, right? Definitely. What are some other ways that you can be rewarded by being exceptional? Well, Mark. You know, getting the best shifts and getting the best place in the bar to work. You work in that, exactly. that front bar maybe for you at the Roxy area. You stole it. Exactly. You have the opportunity maybe to say, I would like to work these shifts, right? Maybe I would like to work with these people. Right. Uh, I want this. Uh, I want that guy to be my porter, and I want to work with those people. Right. Who knows? Like, I'm not saying this happens for everybody or it happens for me necessarily. I'm just saying there are other ways you can be rewarded by it being excellent. You said it doesn't happen for all of them, it happens for the smart ones. Yeah. yeah. You know the job they do, they do the job well, and then they come to you and say, look, this is what I would like. Yes. And if you're valuable to their business, whether it's for $7 or for 22 if I can give you that and I know that you're going to do a good job and you're going to enjoy it, suddenly that's better than minimum wage right there. Exactly. Because right, you're viable. Clint. Craig Burke, I just had him. I mean, I was able to go on a vacation, and all he asked was, when are you getting back? When are you going to be at my bar? Yeah. Like, uh, they're not going to fill that position, and I know I've got it when I come back. And, exactly. Uh, it's, it's a want that they want you there. You have freedom. Yeah. Right? Total freedom. Yeah, you have the opportunity to go and travel and come back, and that's something that, uh, well, Vance Campbell, who originally brought me into the Roxy, who, uh, you know, 
probably the smartest man in this business that I know. Um, he gave me leeway. You know, and I told him right away when I went in for that interview, when he was interviewing me, one of the questions that I had from him uh, at the time I was modeling and I, you know, and I surf, and I said, you, know, the, you should know that the kind of person that I am, the life that I have now, I'm going to occasionally need you know, three weeks or a month off and I'm going to go you know, to Japan or Korea or whatever. Or I'm going to go to Indonesia to surf. Or, you know, that's the kind of person that I am and I need that time to stay sane. Right? So if you can give me that leeway you know, occasionally and I will give you as much notice as I possibly can, excellent. If not, you should not hire me you know, because this is not going to change me. This is part of what makes me me. Right? It's having that freedom. Graham. Well, uh, I'm sure we can all agree with this. Like, I've never heard of a regular walking into a bar and handing the most miserable guy in the bar a free trip or stocks or anything. It's always the guy who's the nicest, the guy who's putting the most effort, listening to him while he licks your ear, whatever. <laughs> 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 yeah, there's many. Ah, no names, no names. <laughs> no name. You have to be the customer's ear and just listen in, you know? <laughs> Nice things will come to nice guys. Still want a job, Mark? Yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No names. Here's my ears. W. Dale. <laughs> if, you as a, if you as a bartender show initiative, uh, you know, and luckily enough from time to time there are training seminars that are not in your hometown. And your employer will say, oh, this guy's got he's potential. He's always interested in that sort of stuff. For myself, a couple years ago, I was lucky enough through my employer to be <clears throat> taken to Las Vegas to the... Uh, the nightclub. And bar show. And yeah. bar show. Yeah. So this year we were actually lucky enough to go ourselves and we took staff with us. Excellent. Uh, apparently. Uh, <laughs> I don't remember, I remember much. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. But yeah, you know, they, they French saw benefits. Me. They took you on a trip they to the learn. They initiative that I have. Yeah, so they took me so I could learn, bring it back to the bar and the same that we did with some right. of our stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for those of you in the uh, in the video, we're going to have a, an ad for that magazine and that uh, trade show later because I really respect what they do. So yeah, really uh, there'll be some things that we can, you know, guide you to later on but that's that's huge if you exactly. if you ever have a chance an opportunity to go to this convention so yep. much fun just do vegas not the one, uh, the one in vegas yeah just don't double down on two kings <laughs> <laughs> do not double Either. down on two kings okay we're showing a sex all right <laughs> <laughs> excellent sort of wrapping up on the fringe benefits of why we want to be exceptional um i want to have freedom from worry it all comes down to that i want to i want to make you know, as much money as I can in the shortest amount of time. I want to have, you know, the respect of the people that I work with, the respect of the people that I work for. I want to have some, you know, some choices in where I work and how I work. Uh, and uh, I want to be, I want to be listened to. You know, I want to have, you know, if I have an idea about something, something I like, something I don't like, I want them to be able to listen to me. And if I've developed a relationship, you know, with them of quality, they're going to pay attention to me when I say something. You know, I don't want to abuse my power that I've developed, you know. But, you know, when something, I think something is important, I want to sit down and I go, can I have five minutes of your time? And you'll give me that five minutes of your time and you will listen to what I have to say because you realize that I don't you know, exaggerate right? and you will pay attention to what I have to say and that's really important to me. Um, there's a lot of friends benefits that we can get um, but I think the main thing is, is just freedom from worry. Also, you know, God forbid that, that I ever uh, choose or get asked to leave the Roxy but I want jobs lining up before I, you know, I've walked out the door. Right? That gives me freedom from worry. I want to create the best place and the best you know, the life that I can in one spot, you know, and make the most of that. But, you know, who knows? I, a bar could burn down. A place happened, uh, you know, a couple of years ago in, the, in, the, in Vancouver. All of a sudden, boom, one night, it's gone. You know, what do you do? You know, what do you do? Well, you know what? He's not going to have any problem finding a job because he's an exceptional person, right, which translated to being an exceptional server bartender, right? Any other questions, comments, observations to wrap up? Um. Or Please. When you talked about how you found a job yeah. earlier, like did you get it in the paper? Did you get it through whatever? How many of us have been hired at a job through or due to reputation? Yeah. Yes. Someone exactly. knowing you and saying, hey, if you ever need a job, you come, come talk to me. me. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And that's what we're trying to do here for everyone as well, exactly. not just ourselves. All right. Yeah. Spread the idea that, you know, go make something happen, make connections, be a good person, and good things will happen to you. Yeah, one last thing, Ian. I got that job at the China Club from Michael phoning me at the mat. He phoned me while I was working behind the bar of the place that I was at before. <laughs> I got the phone. He goes, it's Michael Olson. Do you want a job down at, uh, we're opening up a new restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, is there perks? Yeah. And you're accessible. Yeah. Right, huge. <laughs> last, last thing, Michael. 
Uh, I didn't get a chance to talk about uh, the one thing you guys brushed on, which I, I wanted to make a point was, what is an exceptional bartender? Right. And I've always, I've been asked that question many times, and to sum it up in one word, I've always said presence. I always thought great bartenders have great presence. The ability to be seen behind that bar through their knowledge, their communication skills, whatever, they have great ability to have presence. Excellent. And uh, I can wrap it up for you. I remember a very wise person once told me, um, as he was flipping bottles in the backyard, I said, what are you doing? He said, well, Michael Jordan once qu was quoted as saying, I can accept failure, but I cannot accept not trying. So, nice. here, here to Scott Young. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Ah, oh, go on. All right, that pretty much wraps up today. Thank you very much for coming. I appreciate it. Could you give any advice to someone who's looking at getting into this industry or someone who is already in the industry? I, I can. I'd say that uh, I've been around a long time and uh, amongst Scotty and uh, some of his compatriots, there's uh, one, uh, one thing that everybody is the same about and that's that they're all professionals. If, you, uh, if you're going to do this or if you're going to do anything, you're going to want to do it really well. Right? I mean, maybe uh, you're an actor who's uh, a waiter or a bartender. But uh, if that's how you're paying your rent, you're a bartender and you've got other things uh, that you want to make, uh, uh, make work. I mean, the fact of the matter is, is that if you're a professional, uh, you're going to excel. And uh, that will allow you to do with your life whatever you want. Bar and Beverage was a great one for me. That's basically how I met Scott, was through the Bar and Beverage uh, magazine. Saw a little his, his extreme bartending uh, little um, advertisement there. Made it to Toronto for a... Uh, conference got to know Scott a little bit like that and then once I got there endless like if you ever get a chance uh, at an expo of any kind in, the, in this industry the people you'll meet the the products the, it's it's a wonderful thing uh, I want to say that bartending is simple and it's not about your recipes or how many of uh, the extreme bartending moves that you know it's about your personal style and your ability to uh, look at the customer and listen to the, what the customer is saying so that you can uh, best service the customer because, I uh, just need to go on just to say one thing, is that uh, we're here, we're in this industry, in the bar and restaurant industry, people, are, people know the feeling that they want when they go into a bar and restaurant. But in all the other industries, they, you have to create a desire, but they already have the desire. So all you need to do is figure out what that desire is and whether it be entertainment or uh, uh, distance, somebody wants to be quiet, or whether it be uh, whatever it is, entertainment or style or a few moves, uh, you need to figure that out right away. And, uh, and change, continue to change. Your customer, you're gonna have a lot of regular customers. And continue to change with them so that they get fresh material. I think it's, it's a, a lot of the times. I think it's you know people coming back uh, for uh, another another vacation and coming coming up to you and say I remember the last time I was here and you treated us like this and we had so much fun or you know we get people writing in saying that they've had a great time or whatnot and I think it's just people coming back that that's the best thing and most rewarding for me if they come back then then I know I've done at least something right or the bar in itself has done something right but that's that's the reward for me through the customers point of view Anything uh, Patrick Henry Promotions, um, very good website, uh, and he can point you in a few directions as to where to get books and uh, that sort of stuff. Bartending for Dummies is a great little book. Um, the Mulligan's Bar Guide, which uh, for starting bartenders is really good, fits in your back pocket, doesn't go too out of the way of the realm. Try to stay away from bartending guides that are product specific, which you'll see them out there on the shelves. Try to stay away from them. Um, but if you know an exceptional bartender in your area, if he's somebody that shines from yourself or you know, some of your friends think he's amazing, just sit down and talk to him. Sit, watch him. See what he does. Learn from him or her. Um, learn from people in the industry that have excelled that are close to you. Um, how about information? Books, videos, things that you've watched to help you out? You know what? It kind of, kind of touches back on um, getting into this industry if you're not into service. Uh, one of the most influential books I ever read before getting into this industry was um, 
another one kind of like an advanced course on common sense. It's called How to Win Friends and Influence People. And it just really touches on, uh, you know, second best selling book of all time next to the Bible. Uh, really touches on um, getting to know people, getting to, you know, how to make friends. And, and uh, really all it says in that book is, is if you want to make friends, be a friend and like, you know, be there and be interested in what other people or have to do, you know, be interested in other people's lives even more so than you would be in your own life because everybody wants to wants to talk about themselves, right? right. I've definitely uh, received outstanding service. Um, so many times I couldn't even mention, but one of the times that sticks in my head is the first time I watched Cheap, Shameless Plug for Scotty. The first time I watched Scott Young work at the Roxy. Uh, I've never, I've never ever spent that much money in my life on like no drinks. Uh, it was it was all gratuities. I, I mean, that guy really. I mean, he inspired me to, to become the service professional that I'm trying to be. And uh, that really sticks in my head about an incredible service. Like, man, on fire. Uh, not even just the flipping, like just, you know, the attitude, smile, lighting smokes, just smiling, remembering. And those are the things that sort of stuck in my head. You build a career for yourself, so don't steal from your employer. Don't steal from your buddies you're working with. Don't screw your busser. Don't forget the kitchen. Don't forget these people that make you the money you're making. Don't just assume it's you and these people are giving you hand over fist cash. Although they're giving it to you and they think that it's you, it's all the people behind you. So don't forget the group that makes you the money you make. I, I don't mean to put any pressure on you, um, but honestly this is, I think is one of the most uh, important questions of this entire series. Um, why do you want to be exceptional at what you do in this industry? or I guess in any industry? My answer to that would be, why wouldn't I? Um, that's like entering a game and not wanting to win, not having the desire to win. Uh, that's like cashing in a $100 bill and not wanting your $100 in, in change. It's just, that doesn't even enter the uh, equation for me. I mean, why wouldn't you want to be the best that you can be, whether it be uh, bartending, uh, a lawyer, a doctor, a teacher, cleaning toilets? I mean, why wouldn't you want to be the, best toilet cleaner you could be. <laughs> because I don't want to clean toilets. <laughs> <laughs> Can we do that one again? Yeah, you betcha. That pretty much wraps it up. Hope you enjoyed the video as much as we enjoyed making it. Be sure to check out our website. We've got lots of new stuff going up all the time. And if you like what we do, tell your friends about us. We'd really appreciate it. Also, make sure you check out the ads at the end of the video. These are some great companies and they can really help you if you give them a chance. So call them and find out for yourself. I'd like to leave you with three of my favorite quotes and a few thoughts. Abraham Lincoln said, I don't think much about a man who doesn't know more tomorrow than he did today. Michael Jordan said, I can accept failure. Everybody fails sometimes, but I can't accept not trying. And Wayne Gretzky said, I miss 100% of the shots that I don't take. So bottom line, care enough about what you do to think about how to do it better. And be proactive. Go out there and make something happen in your life. But above all, enjoy your life because you never know how long you've got. Who wants to play golf? Barsmart now brings you a sensational six-week program.
you'll learn everything you need to know about serving drinks with style. <laughs> with step-by-step -step and slow motion instruction, you'll learn easily, quickly and properly, so you won't spill the profits or break everything in sight. This is a business and great bartenders do more than just take orders. So create excitement and increase your sales revenue with the Extreme Bartending Video Training Series. Our three videos with over 240 moves in all is a must for bartenders everywhere. No matter what level of bartender you are now, if you follow our program you'll increase your odds for success because you'll make an impact on every customer you ever serve. Think about it. If you don't entertain your customers, someone else will. Because in this highly competitive industry, you can't just expect high sales and big tips. You've got to earn them. So you can have a lot of fun with it. You can make more money for your bar, make more money for yourself. And if you do it properly, it's a win-win-win situation for everybody. gives a little spark to people's lives. I think the world's starving for entertainment. Cocktail the movie. That was great. It was a really good beginning. But, uh, that was 1988. Hopefully by now we've taken it further. Look out!